Titleist, Ping, TaylorMade, Callaway, Mizuno, Yonex, Strixon, every golf company under the sun now offer their premium driver in adjustable hosels with adjustable loft and in some cases lie angle and face angle. But how much difference does it really make? Today I've got a Ping G400 LS Tech and the standard loft is 8.5 degrees. Now the adjustable Ping sleeve allows you to go a degree up, a degree down, as well as 0.6 of a degree up and 0.6 of a degree down. How much difference does this really make? And what loft should you guys at home be using in your adjustable driver? Let's find out and let's do it now. Saying that, that was a beauty. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel and you like course vlogs, you like club technology reviews, just like this one on what loft should you use on your driver, or you like brand new club reviews, such as Titleist brand new TS project drivers that they have coming out in the not too distant future. I reviewed those last week. If you want to see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Maybe you like completely and utterly free golf tips to help you with your handicap, help you enjoy the game, and ultimately help you lower your scores. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you put the thumbs up and comment below. As always, I want you guys to be a part of my content. In today's video, I want you to comment what driver are you using? Is it adjustable? And if it is, what loft setting are you using it on and why? That should lead to some lengthy comments, shouldn't it? But let's get back to the video. Now loft has all of a sudden become a much more prominent factor in golf clubs. I remember when I was a junior, everybody used a nine and a half degree driver and that was it. But times have changed massively. Now it's so important to get fit for your driver, get the right loft, get the right spin rate and get the correct launch angles to help you hit the ball as far as possible whilst keeping it in play, obviously. Today I'm using a Ping G400 driver, I'm going to test it on all the five different loft settings that it offers and I'm going to show you guys the differences at home. What loft driver should you be using? Do you know? Have you been fitted for your driver? Is it something which you take seriously or do you grab one off the rack at nine and a half degrees and get out there and play? What about the lie angle of the driver as well? When you change the loft of the driver, the lie angle can also be tweaked. I've spent the morning looking on Ping's website to not only find out what the options are for loft settings on this driver, but also when I do change the loft settings, what happens to the lie angle of the golf club. Now Ping's website doesn't offer you a lot with this, all it offers you is the average lie angle of the club in the five settings, which is a 58 degree lie angle. And lie angle can play a huge role, not only in where the face is pointed at impact, but also at impact. If you strike a golf ball out the heel, and we now change the lie angle of the driver, you can see now that strike location is getting more centered just because I've changed the lie angle of the driver. That's cool, isn't it? Anyway, that's enough of the technical mumbo jumbo. Let's hit a couple of shots. I'm gonna hit around five shots with each on the five different settings. I'm gonna start with it on its standard setting. So today that is eight and a half with this driver. Then I'm gonna go a full degree down, then 0.6 of a degree down, then 0.6 of a degree up, then a full degree up. How much difference do you think there's gonna be? Do you think there'll be a lot? Let's find out. As always in my test, we are using premium golf balls, in this case, Titleist Pro V1. That was a nice one to start the day. I am gonna be using exactly the same tee height on all these shots as well. Again, just to make it as fair a test as possible. Okay, that's five shots hit with the standard loft. Remember, this is an eight and a half degree driver. Let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, numbers with the standard loft. Total distance, we'll get straight to that one first, 275 yards with a carry distance of 248. Now remember these numbers because when we do compare the different settings, the distance is gonna be the big factor, isn't it? Personally, I didn't think the trajectory was bad. I could get it flighted, I could get it out there. It's gonna be interesting to see when I do drop down next to seven and a half, what happens to that trajectory. Spin rate averaging just under 3,000, which is quite a lot actually, especially for a low spinning driver like the Ping LS Tech. When I compared this with the TaylorMade M3 440 head in a low spin setting, I got a lot lower spin than that. So it just goes to show how day to day things can change, your swing can change. So when you do get fitted for a driver, maybe do it over a couple of days instead of in that one session. Let's crank it down. Let's go to seven and a half degrees 
and see what happens to these numbers. Now, I guess the big factor is how consistent do I have to be as the golfer to see a massive difference on such small loft settings. I'm expecting to see a bit of a difference in the full degree settings, but when we're talking 0.6 degrees, I don't think I return the club that consistently to the ball to see a massive difference over a number of shots. Let's find out. Now playing in the minus one degree setting of the loft adjustment. Looking down at it, it does look a little bit different. The lack of loft looking down at the head almost gives it a little bit of a less forgiving look to me. Straight away, one shot in, I personally think I'm gonna to struggle to launch this playing at seven and a half degrees. Saying that, that was a beauty. That ball's finished just shy of 290 yards. The longest of the day by quite a long way. Struggle to launch it, seven and a half degrees. Let's carry on. That's another nice one. That was huge. Just shy of 300 yards. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys, we are playing slightly downwind here today, so that's definitely gonna have an effect. But that's massive. Even the carry, 262 carry. Wow. Now, I'm just gonna have to show you the numbers on these, aren't I? Average distance, 288 yards. That's 13 yards further than with the standard loft. I don't feel like I've particularly swung it that much better than the first group of shots. I feel like it's quite a consistent swing today. In all honesty, the first shot that I hit with this, I didn't launch and I, I thought, oh wow, this is gonna be an embarrassing test. Then look at those numbers. Look at the last four numbers. That is an insane distance. Spin rate down at 2,700, so still even a tiny bit high. The real thing that I've really, really enjoyed about that though is how straight they've all gone. And I thought taking the loft away, to be honest, I could see myself spraying it all over the place, but that wasn't the case. I do find it very interesting if we look towards the vertical launch numbers, 12.9 in the standard loft and 12.8 in one degree down. So really not that big a difference. Let's now bridge that gap. I'm gonna put it on the 0.6 lower setting. So that should play it at 7.9 degrees. Very precise, I know. Bearing in mind that we are dealing with tolerances of up to one or two degrees anyway, which I guess is the big point behind me making this video to see how much difference it actually plays for you guys at home and obviously myself. So for people gaming ping drivers, this is the small minus, not the big minus sign. I guess looking at the numbers from before, if this test is as scientific as I think it could be or might be or probably isn't, the distance should be anywhere between 275 average and 288 average, maybe around 281. That ball never really seemed to get airborne. It's only pitched at like 230 odd. If you do misstrike it with not a lot of loft, there's not the element of forgiveness there that you have if you do loft up. But then when you do catch one, wow. And I've got to say, this is the first time I've really spent an extended period of time with the Ping G400 LS Tech, and it's sort of growing on me. And by sort of, it's really growing on me. Came across that one a little bit and it had more movement on it than I would have liked. Still out there at 275 though, so not a terrible effort at all. Okay, that's five shots hit with the Ping G400 LS Tech on the 0.6 lower loft setting. Let's just take a look. Just as I predicted, or just as I kind of wanted to see, the average is bang in the middle between the standard loft setting and the one degree loft setting. I find that kind of weird. I, I don't know, I can't imagine there should be that big a difference, but the numbers don't lie and there is that amount of difference. I definitely had a couple on that last setting where it really kind of struggled to launch and struggled to get airborne. But I must say, if I didn't have the numbers behind me and I didn't know what I was looking at, I wouldn't be able to tell you a massive difference based on the trajectory that I'm seeing. It's all down to the pilot, all down to the swing, and all down to how I get that ball out there myself. 
let's put the loft up let's go as high as it goes it's going to be nine and a half plus one degree loft setting and see how that goes now if the correlation's correct this shouldn't go anywhere at all should it this should be the shortest possible one I hope not, because I've always used a 9.5 degree driver. But then, there is the point, isn't there, that every driver head is different. So a 9.5 degree lofted Ping LS Tech, G400 should I say, will have different launch characteristics to a tailor-made M4, to a Titleist TS2, TS3. Just because you have a 9.5 degree head in one driver doesn't necessarily mean you want a 9.5 degree head in all drivers. Let's do it. That has gone into orbit. And the carry distance is way down and total distance. Total distance on that one is shorter than some of the carries I was making with the lower lofted club. Another one really high and pretty much a carbon copy of the first shot. I've got to say dispersion is very impressive with this but they're going so high like I wouldn't even need the launch monitor to tell me these are going way too high not gonna lie that was a tired toey swing amazingly the worst swing of the bunch with the higher lofted setting it has gone the furthest I got it really toey it's brought the spin rate way down and it's just made it go a little bit further okay not great numbers at all there let's take a look at them Total distance 267.0, over 20 yards less than when I had the driver two degrees down from there in the one degree down setting. Spin rate around 3000, way too much. To be fair, it's a good job I got swing number four in there out of the toe to get those averages up because without that, it would have been even lower than that. I think we pretty much know where we're going with this, and I also think. I've learned a little bit of something about what loft I should use, well, especially in a Ping G400 LS Tech. Like we said earlier, things may differ for different clubs. Just to make it a fair test and just to round off the video, I am going to hit some in the 0.6 up setting. Again, I would probably expect to see this in and amongst 270. I can't see it pulling any trees up like the lower settings did, but let's do it anyway. Now that feels as good a drive as I can hit. As good a drive as I can hit, 278 total, 10 to 15 yards behind the good strikes with the lower loft. Now I hope that we've all learned something from this video and we're not over yet, I'm going to hit a couple more again to make it a fair test. But if you've got an adjustable driver at home and you have a pro with a launch monitor, which let's face it, most of us do have access to one nowadays, book in for a session and see what kind of loft you're using. See if you can gain distance. I've got a 20 yard difference between these settings here. 20 yards. Yes, you could say I could hit more golf balls. Yes, you could say I could be out here all day. But as fair tests go, I've used the same golf ball, the same tee height, a couple of minutes between each other with the same driver head and the same shaft. Doesn't get much fairer than that, does it? Very high again. Let's hit one more and wrap this up. Just a quick look at the numbers there for the plus 0.6 loft setting on the Ping G400. Average total 283.6, spin rate down at 27, which does go to show a lot of these numbers are dependent upon the swings I put on them. However, however, I do feel as though I've put good swings on these today. Yes, you're not going to strike every single one perfect, but I've given every single loft set in there a reasonable chance to hit some good golf shots. And in fairness, I am absolutely staggered by the difference that I've seen in these numbers. Like I said, if I didn't have the flight scope behind me, I don't think I'd be able to tell a massive difference looking at the trajectory, especially not the 20 yard difference which we've seen. But it definitely brings me back to one of the points I said earlier in the video. If you have a driver with an adjustable loft setting and you're not quite sure, you feel like you should be hitting it further, go and see your pro, get on a launch monitor, have half an hour, have 20, 
This test has taken me half an hour and I've been faffing about with filming and things like that. You could do this in a 15, 20 minute session. Make sure you use the same golf balls. Make sure you put fair swings on them like I've tried my best to do and see if you can find yourself that yardage. I was a touch pessimistic doing this video. The whole idea behind the video was for me to show you that there isn't a massive difference in loft settings. And to be honest, I'm stood here eating my own words because I've just seen a massive difference in loft settings. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed that video. I hope you've enjoyed the numbers and I hope you've enjoyed seeing me pick up some yardage hopefully i can take this onto the golf course you might well be going into the bag as always if you have enjoyed the video put those thumbs up smash the subscribe button the channel's growing absolutely wonderfully and i want each and every you at home to be a part of it if you found the video interesting please do comment below let me know your thoughts see you soon